a really big game for each one of these young grizzled veterans. And it's weird, you, you know, both of them 20, 21 and 20 years old, and you're calling them grizzled veterans, but they just have so much competitive Madden experience. That's what they are at even such a young age. And this is an interdivisional, but cross divisional. Of course, with Tweez in Division A, True in Division B of the Legend Conference. So it doesn't mean as much as when you're facing those divisional rivals, but if they can jump out there, it's big. Let's take a look at the playbook matchups. Yeah, you got True Boy setting up his defense. He's going to be in that Saints defensive playbook. You know, they got a 4 3 set. He's going to be able to stop the run really well. We know Tweez likes to run the ball. Tweez in his West Coast offensive playbook, and that is a popular playbook here in the uh, elite conference, Scott. We've seen tons of players go to that West Coast. Tweez runs it a little differently than the rest of the guys, though. He's not in that gun, the scum bunches, I'm going to start calling it. <laughs> well, Tweez will start with it first. They're setting up their audibles to go along with those playbooks. And then they'll be jumping in. Audibles on the fly has been a nice change of pace. The, the offense was sort of struggling at the beginning of Madden 18 after the initial patch that fixed a lot of the zones and the offense just needs a little work here's the shot and it's a meeting at the quarterback and joey bosa made the initial hit one of my friends who played tackle in the nfl he said after players will get a big sack on you they, they look at you go line and say quarterback meat tastes sweet <laughs> looked like the defense had sweet tooth right there early in the game here's a second and 20. Quickly brings up a third and 20 after the overthrow. Third and 20 at your own nine, Archie. That's not good. Tweeds has been a slow starter all season long. Let's see what he can do here on this third and 20. Got to watch the low throw to those seam receivers, either Ginn or Hill. So here's a third and 20 from the nine. Wow. <laughs> Bo Jackson. And that's Madden. You can have back-to-back -back two unfortunate plays and throw an absolute dot. It's a risky throw. True Boy just a step behind, try to go guard the seam, was playing a little bit too far underneath. And if you're true on a big third and 20 like that, you, you, got, you can't bite down on that drag stuff. You need to go and just run with the seam right away and take it away. That slight hesitation hurt him, and now Tweez getting on his horse. In the running game now to the 45. It's going to bring up a first and 10. Both of these guys, true with a ton of live event experience. Young Tweez. And Get somehow Hill. With the grab, and Tweed strikes first. Young Grizzly getting his deep bomb together. He was having trouble with it earlier in the season. That one he let rip. What I was saying, Tweed doesn't have a ton of live event experience, the Madden Classic being his first live event, but he's played in some hostile environments in those underground challenger events. People standing behind you, screaming, going nuts. And he's handled it many of times. He's won plenty of challenger events, so a lot of competitive Madden experience between these two young men. Well, you remember earlier in the season, RG, he was using Randall Cunningham, switches to Deshaun, and that's right on the money. So 7 nothing here between Tweez and True. Let's jump over to the other side and check out Chaos and Safa. This is a third and eight with Sop at the 25, Mariota. All day. He's going to have a decision to make at the 20. He's going to go tempo. And Sop has been awesome in this Ultimate League season. He started off gloomy early in the season, and then he's really just turned it around, been laser focused, playing with a lot of emotion and passion. Go! And he throws Harrison open. He was double covered. It's fourth and two. I mean, come on now. Threw him open. Uh, nice little throw. I, I think he wanted the cloud to stay, keep outside leverage, bit on, bit inside on the C route, and that's gun bunch. 
those C routes and Gun Bunch are better than the normal corner strike plays. You talk to the players, one of the reasons Gun Bunch is so popular, Scott, is those the plays on the corner strike or the PA post, those C routes from the outside receivers, we like to call them, they're much shorter in this formation, so they, it doesn't take as long for them to get open. The defense has <laughs> less time to react, and it's one of the few formations that has that short C route. You call corner strike out of gun doubles, which also has the C route on the outside. They go deeper. The defense plays it much better. It's a big reason why that formation is so popular in the competitive mountain. First and goal. One route. There's Herschel. But let's go back. I mean, fourth and two. He, he completed it, right? But you're at the 20. Conventional wisdom would say to take the three. I think if you're Safa, you just feeling good that you can play defense. I mean, Chaos hasn't shown us a lot on offense. He settled for field goals more times than he would have liked to. Doesn't have a lot of touchdowns this season. If you're Safa, that's just good scouting where you know, even if I don't get this, I'm confident that I can play defense. That's a good point. Hands it off to Walker again. Got two. So you're going to have a third and goal from the eight. Safa rocking the needed shirt, showing Dubby some love. Got that same shirt, I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> Those shirts are comfortable, it's that nice material. So he needs eight to get to pay dirt. Chaos always, he looks so sad with his game face sometimes. <laughs> I don't mean to giggle, but it's a third and goal from the eight. Yeah, I mean, if you look at Safa's game face compared to his, it's good lurk. And take off with Mariota. Oop. Makes a man miss. That'll count as a rushing yard, not a sack. And you're, here you are, you're selling for three again. Get the field goal anyway. But you, you got to give homage to Chaos. He's been playing good defense all season. It's really been the offense that's been hurting him. But I've been impressed when I, when I watch him play defense. You haven't seen anybody easily move the ball against him yet. Of course, Safa was in the club championship representing those very Falcons that he's representing right now. All the way to the NFC Conference Championship game, the NFC Championship game, one win away from making that club championship final. He would have beat his crew member, Ghost, would have went up against Problem. Of course, Ghost would go on to win it all. Three to nothing here near the end of the first. So let's swap back over and see what's going on with Tweez and True. T-squared matchup. And there's Henry rumbling out to the 30. So Tweez already with a 7-0 lead, looking to add to it. Yeah, he got a stop on True. He's held True Boy to two yards. Tweez is just relentless with this off tackle after strong close. Press F and pay respects to number 20 there. He got absolutely run over. We've been seeing that from Derrick Henry all season long. I didn't know if that was, we'll see it again. Was that, I think that's Barber. Boom! It's, no, that's Renfro. Renfro got lit up. Henry. He goes again. There's that secure tackle. That's got to be the most used number in Madden is 20. <laughs> He's got five guys on his roster that wear number 20. Barry Reed, Barry Sanders, Ed Reed, so Barry Reed. There's probably a Barry Reed out there somewhere. I, I, I assume he doesn't have as good as moves <laughs> <laughs> as Sanders uh -oh. does. Uh-oh, to stop. Another missed tackle by Renfro. That'll lead to a first down. I'm worried about True's defense right now. It's in this 4-3, you should be able to stop this run. But all types of openings for Tweez right now. He's just going to relentlessly run this off tackle until tr True shows him he can stop it. And you know what? There ain't nothing wrong with that. There's big money on the line right here. Big implications. Well, the other thing is True is he's a runner himself. So if you're eating the clock, that's less and less opportunity for True Boy to put a drive together. You get up two possessions on True Boy, that makes it really tough on him. And that's how the first quarter will end between Tweez and True. So there's the scores. Tweez up seven to nothing. Musafa with a three nothing lead over Chaos.
And here's the start of the second quarter. It's a seven nothing game between Tweez and True. Both these guys second in their division. Tweez in Division A, True in Division B of the Legend Conference. It's a big game. Remember, it's, it is important how you finish in your division, but it's overall conference. So if you look at the full conference standings, they're actually neck and neck. Yeah, that's a good point, Coach Rain. You, you can, there is a world where you can get last in your division and still make those playoffs if you have a better record than the bottom two people of the other, in the other division of the Legend Conference. The bell will toll for a third and three at the 27 for Tweez. We've got two conferences. We're in the Legend Conference. We've got the Elite Conference as well. Two that's, divisions in each. Got Skimbo over there and spot me. A couple other belt winners. Picks up the first down here. He's, I don't know if you're noticing this, RG, but he's chewing this clock. It's, and it's, I, I, mean, I mean, literally chewing ooh. the clock as Henry gets loose. Yeah, and that's he set the setting to chew. Yeah, that's a mechanic. You see on the bottom left of the screen when he's at the play call screen, you press LB, you go to chew clock. What that does is after you select your play, it automatically takes the play clock down to 10 seconds. That way you don't got to sit there and kill the clock at the line of scrimmage. Usually something you see at the end of the game, Tweez just getting right to it. The thing that it kills you with is you, you take the play clock down to 10 seconds, you, you kill some time, but then you have a limited amount of time to make adjustments at the line of scrimmage, you see? And so does the defense. Exactly. Third it's and two. Quick hike situation. He's throwing, he's got to be careful. Whoa! And it's picked bad off! Bad play, bad read! Oh, look at Tweez, yep. That body language tells a story. Oh, he thumbed out on that one, the young Grizzly. In complete control, and then just throws a Stevie. Well, he tested the user the whole time. That was True's assignment, and he was on the coverage and made the play, the interception in the end zone. And now, after being dominated, he's got an opportunity to come down here and tie this game. Oh, that's how you lose, John Madden. Football games, Coltrane. You're managing the clock biblically. You're getting a chance where you can just take the field goal, go up two possessions against the runner. You get greedy, you throw the book. Now Here's you the get lefty. through a chance. Michael Vick takes it to the 30. It's going to be third and inches. It's got to be third and an inch. I mean, he when he got spun down, that ball was, was upfield. It looks like True just wants to take this to the two-minute warning. We still got to be thinking about that interception. You just got to put it behind you, have a short memory. These guys got to, are they heading to Roscoe's after this? I mean, they're really running this clock. It's like they got a reservation to be somewhere. Do we hit Roscoe's one time Ooh. out here already? Ooh. Got the Obama added a breast. And then some mac and cheese and green sides added on as well. Yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, a mac real and deal cheese meal. is the real deal. And the Obama, that's a waffle when it comes with three wings. Then you add the breast and get some sides as well. First and 10. I mean, we've got to start this food podcast. We spend a majority of the air time. The, the other thing that's key <laughs> is you take some of the waffle syrup and put it, get some of that on the chicken. I, I thought that was a given. Some people don't do that. Some people don't do that? No, I've seen it. Where's this world coming to? Second and seven at the 33, 95 seconds left in the half. True, trying to tie up Tweez. Got a long way to go. Man, True, he's just, he's such a run first type player. I mean, we've seen him just make highlight real plays. He's looking crispy on offense and then his quarterback stats will pop down and it's, you realize, dang, when he passes the ball, he's like two for nine with an into. One of the best run games in the nation, but definitely not one of the better passers on the circuit. Let's go. Brought down at the 39, that brings up a third and two. 75 seconds left in the half. Look at him, there he goes. Oh, he's so icky! Spins out to the 42, he's in plus territory. Needs about seven yards to be in field goal range. And this is what I like about Drew. He sticks to his game plan. He knows his strong suit is running the ball, getting out in the open field, showcasing his amazing stick work. 
and he just sticks to the game plan to give him chances to do that. Vic, rolling left. Got to throw it away. Yeah. Can't get yeah. rid of it. Maybe that's what he's got to be going for Vic for, maybe. Just try to open up the passing game with the, the mobility threat. Can't be taking sacks right now, Drew. Especially, you, you were moving the ball, you're going for a touchdown on this drive. Now you're almost in a position with only one timeout. You just got to fight for that field goal. Hands it off to Gurley. Fight to the 46. It's going to bring up a third and 14. Here's some tempo. Sweet's not wasting any timeouts. He's not too interested in getting this ball back. He's just worried about stopping true. Vic in the gun. I'm sweet, though. I would have probably took a timeout. Check it down, and Ingram fights to the 35. He's got Dan Bailey. I think that's a bit out of Bailey's <laughs> range. 52 would be stretching it. Didn't really go in on the kickers, just carries in a, in a full roster. Which is interesting with only a run, has two kickers. With a run heavy type offense, you don't have the, the greatest passing attack. You're not going to put up a lot of points. You're just going to play solid defense, control the clock. You would think he'd want a good kicker. There's a turnover on downs. Oh. And that's the other thing. If you're going to have Vic, I get buying more time, but at some point you got to threaten that you're willing to take off. Willing to use his legs to pick up yards. Sometimes it's easier said than done when you're going up against a grizzly like Tweez. Put that spy out there. But I agree, Scott. If you're going to use him, you better have a game plan that's going to let you utilize all of his weapons. A absolutely. If they're spying, that means you got time to kind of sit in the pocket and let that deep ball rip. Going to have some money plays lined up. That's the strength of Vic is the deep throw. Not real great in the intermediate passing game. Hands it off to Henry, spins. And he's going to use a timeout. One more play just to see if he can break one here. I, I like what Tweez does. He, he, when he runs it for these last second situations, he kind of stops Le'Veon Bell style, lets the block is set, and then tries to get super sticky-icky in the open field. See the stop? No good, though. That's how the half will end. 7 nothing between Tweez and True. So let's fly over to the other side, catch the last 25 seconds of this one as Sapa completes it down to the eight-yard line, and he'll use his final timeout. So no timeouts, 22 seconds, and he leads by three. So first and goal. He's one of your favorite game faces, right? Yeah, yeah, Safa, he's here to play. I'm telling you, to start off the season like he did and to not get down in the dumps and just keep on grinding like he did, show the emotion, show the passion, the focus, that's the type of player I like to see. Throws it to the back of the end zone, but Delaney Walker doesn't even put his hands up. Damn. See, and even when he's frustrated, it, it doesn't look like he's out of his game state. You know what I mean? He still looks focused, still locked in. Man on a mission, and, and he showed a great attitude all season long. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Safa in the playoffs. He doesn't let his emotions get too high, doesn't get too low on himself. Can't take a sack. No timeouts. He's going to have to put the field goal team on the field right now. Yep. This is different in Madden than it is in real life. Usually you would want to hurry up and clock it. In Madden, it's quicker to just go to the play call screen, quickly select the field goal, and try to get the kickoff like he does right there. Best uh, remove right there. That's good. There's really, you don't have that situation where you're running the team on. You're, you're, you're switching out those 11 guys, you know, for a, for the special teams. So it's just quicker just to go Not right let, to the let, huddle. Yeah, exactly. Let the playbook come up, scroll as fast as you can to the field goal, pick it, and then your guys are at the line of scrimmage. Definitely different aspects between Madden football and real life, but these competitors are aware of that. 
a way to capitalize on the situation if you're Mustafa Jones. I mean, everyone's playing the same game. It's up to you to capitalize on those situations. Here at the half, 7-0 between Tweez and Drew. And Musafa with two field goals leads Chaos by six. Start of the third quarter between Tweez and True in a touchdown game. And for True, RG, he's got to get some offense going. Yeah, had the big interception to prevent Tweez from going up two possessions down there in the red zone. Just stalled out again on his offensive drive. And I think it's more about his passing game. He needs to find a way to get that going. He usually runs the ball fine, but once he finds himself in those third and pass situations, he just hasn't had the, the, the reads or the progressions to, to convert in those situations consistently. I mean, you take a guy like Problem, and he runs the ball a lot. He has a similar game plan to Drew, but he's able to convert a lot of the time on those third down situations, and I think that's where Drew's hurting the most right now on offense. First and 10. The good news is he gets the ball first, and Gurley got sucked up into the to the line. Usually, True's a lot better bouncing that outside. Yeah, yeah he, he, we talk about it. He's got one of some of the best stick work in the entire community. I mean, he's got some real highlight plays if you go to down into the archives. Renfro comes in, makes a big play. That forces a third and nine. And this is the situation we were just talking about, Scott. These are the situations he needs to start converting on. Vic. There it is. Low throw to Sharp. That was a hottie dotty. And single coverage with the safety. True in a different type of offensive playbook. He's in that run heavy. Offensive playbook. Only competitor we've seen bring that playbook out all season long. Weeze, meanwhile, in the popular Kansas City Chiefs defensive playbook. Not able to turn it upfield, so it's a gain of one. And the interesting thing about True, sometimes he's really phenomenal with the stick work, and sometimes it's very basic. Could have happened. All or nothing, back to Gurley. And he's wrapped up at the 46. Some of the most consistent stick work out there on the circuit. I mean, you gotta go problem, for sure. I'll be honest, I like Drini. Drini's I like Drini in the run game. very yeah. good. Drini runs the ball very, very well. Skimbo's pocket press. Skimbo, when it comes to protecting his quarterback, and Having that consistent pocket presence. Yeah, Mustafa Jones over there on the other station. We'll be sure to get an update. Third and ten here at the 46. Vic dropping back and finding Ingram all the way down at the 26-yard line. Well, Drew getting the passing game going, Vic. Finds a deep one to Ingram, possession catch, big game. Finds himself in field goal range. Needs to turn this into seven. Audibles to the run. Gurley trying to get a block inside the red zone. Second and two. Gun bunch tight end formation. This is different than the normal bunch that we're used to seeing. Got the running back aligned on the same side as the tight end with the tight end isolated. So formation we saw Spotty please have a lot of success with last year in Madden Classic, won him the belt. There's a big difference when you take out Gurley and come back with Devontae Mays, a 60 overall player. Third and four after the loss of two. Fair to say he doesn't have the two-headed monster. The Here's defense, the heat. Please, good read. Ew, that was Ixon. <coughs> I'll take it first down to the 11. So True looking very comfortable throwing the ball on this drive. Look at the spin. This looks crispy. Defender, whoopsie. Ooh. The spin and then the cutback right. Tweez goes for the strip. Strips that air. New set of down for True. Let's go. Coming up on two minutes left in the third. Trailing by a touchdown is True. 
but he's on a drive. And Amos says hello. Amos with that secure tackle, he's a beast. One of the fastest players in the game with that chemistry. Second and 10 now from the 11s. Can still get a first down if he gets to the half yard line. He pinches line right there. So True goes to the stretch. Gurley, 14 carries for 47 yards. And if you're a run heavy guy, that's not great stats. It just shows he's willing to stick to that game plan, though. You know, a lot of us, you blow my run up one or two times in the backfield, I get scared to go back to it. Not true. He's got a game plan. He's sticking with it. And that's important. That's an underrated skill if you want to compete at the highest level. I mean, also, you got to be able to adapt. If the game plan's blatantly not working, hopefully you got something else. But it's not like this game's out of reach. It's one score ball game, he's in the red zone. And he takes a sack all the way back at the 22 yard line. It's going to be fourth and 21. Third down situations, tough for true. The field goal is up and it's good. Seven to three with 101 to go. <laughs> Spin move. And they'll mark him down at the 18 yard line. And you don't get the touchdown on that drive, RG, but you put a little pressure on Tweez to have to do something here. Yeah, if you're Tweez, you want to get points. You don't want to give Drew a chance to get the ball back, and then he scores a touchdown and he's in the lead. At least if you're Tweez, if you could turn this into points, you could still give up the touchdown and either be tied or still in the lead. Second and eight. Just 49 seconds left here in the third, so let's get a game update. Thanks, guys. Chaos finally driving a little bit against Musafa, and then... Boom! Goes the dynamite. That's a pick right there going the other way. Finished this drive with a field goal, up 9-0. Since this update actually picked him off again, Safa has the ball in the third quarter with a minute left. Another one. So first and 10. 26 seconds remaining in the third. Good interception from that Safa highlight. You see him, he clicked onto that defender, cut underneath the corner. Going up top. He's up top! And overthrew Ted Ginn Jr. Oh, we've seen that happen several times this season for Tweez, where he's got the deep ball, that nine route going butt naked down the sideline. He lets it rip, just a little too much mustard, can't get his hands on it. That's frustrating if you're a Madden player, a few inches away from a deep bomb touchdown. Just not able to execute. Those small wide receivers, they, they can burn them, but they're going to have trouble getting their hands on those deep lead passes. And Hill, you can see the speed. And that's several times this season here in the Ultimate League that we've seen Tweez lead those speedsters way too far out when maybe even just a non-lead pass would have worked. Yeah, that's a good point. Either the non-lead pass, or, or get yourself some bigger wide receivers. I, I can't stress enough the difference it makes when you got that extra wingspan to put your hands up. So that's the end of the third over there. Let's jump over here with 20 seconds left in the third quarter. And Safa. Safa's in complete control in this one. He's already up two possessions. He's got the ball, chaos territory. He's just going to continue to kill this clock. But if you're Safa, this is where you might want to get a bit more aggressive. The field goal keeps the two possessions. Even a touchdown two possessions. Now you could score and go for two, two. Make it and three. make it a three possession game. So I assume he'll do that if he's able to punch it in. So we're at the end of the third. Tweez with a 7-3 lead over True. And Musafa Jones with that stingy defense up nine to nothing over Chaos. And it's time to start the third quarter between Tweeds and True here in the Legend Conference, seven to three. You can see that expression on Tweeds. He know he he knew he had a touchdown, and he overthrew him. Can't let True back into this game. Black Brown, Black Brown. Lost divisional game right here, middle of the season. Both of these guys' records at 500. 
Ball at the 41. Field goal would make it a touchdown game. Watson stands tall. Oh. And Hill. <laughs> Flashback to Madden 16 with the grab down at the one. Oh man, true. Let's see what happened with his user defender here. Just gets caught up in that aggressive catch animation. Maybe going for the interception instead of the SWAT right there. The SWAT would have given him a better chance to knock out that catch from Tyreek Hill. I thought he had the that pick. Hurts. Instead he gets mossed by Tyreek and Henry. A walk in the park, feed the Ducks. Touchdown, Tweez. In the Boston Common feed in the Ducks. <laughs> the kick is up and it's good. So it's 14 to three. So Tweez didn't hang his head. He overthrew a pass that would have been a touchdown. And maybe got a little mad and magic, but he's now up 11. Yeah, I mean, it's frustrating. If you're true, like you said, the ball's up, your eyes get wide, you're thinking interception, and then before you know it, Tyree kills just going up, getting mossy. And the, the one thing I could think he could have done better in that situation <laughs> is I'm assuming he went for the interception. If there's a chance of that aggressive catch animation playing, it, you're better off going for the SWAT. Keep it safe. Let's go. Now you have to start abandoning the run game just a tad. You got RB if you want it. Oh, we let it rip. Boom! And he hits sharp on the bomb down at the six. The truth saying, hurry up, hurry up. Trying to get his offense going. And there we talked about it. This spy and Mike Vick, let the routes develop, let it rip. Struggling offense with a big play right there. Way to respond if you're true. Right between Wilson and Amos, the two safeties get split on the cover two. Needs to be six yards though. Here goes Dickens. And touchdown true. Just like that. Two plays. And with a two point conversion, he could cut this thing to three. What are you seeing on the play sheet here? Do you? Do you well, uh, let me Ooh. just give you a thought real quick. Okay, Forget please. the play sheet for a second. How much has True Boy grown since we first saw him in the MCS? Hold on, this two-point conversion here real quick, Scott. Just big because it'll make it field goal game if he can get it. Here's the two-point. Story on pause for oh. a second. Oh. We got a flag. It's going to be a delay of game, and now you got to kick the extra oh, point. Oh, no, I think he's still going to go. I was saying real but quick. But see, I mean, if you get to 10, you hold Tweez to a field goal, it's still a seven-point game. It's you got to go for two at some point, maybe. It's a good point. But the question is, do you have to go for two twice? He's feeling good about his play call. I don't know how many money plays you, you practice from the seven-yard line, but we're about to find out. Vic. Throws uh -oh. it up this and it's picked back. off. This could go for two. Uh oh, Vickens, the ultimate insurance. Can he do it? The Vickens is chasing him. Good cut by Tweez. And Harrison no! Smith oh, doesn't holy. see Paul Richardson, oh, the fastest player on the field. Came out of nowhere, <laughs> nowhere Tweez says. The point I was trying to make before the two point pull, though. It's in the past we've seen True get stuck in his feelings before. We've criticized him for not, you know, when things don't go his way, not being able to keep his composure. He gets aggressive caught on as you see this big two-point play. He gets aggressive caught on. It's really frustrating. But you see him keep his poise, put together a bomb drive, a good scramble fix, score a touchdown, and gets himself back in the ball game. And that's just growth by the young man. Watson! Right back! Let's go! Die! Bombs over Baghdad! Come on, man! Oh, man! Dodge City Tweez! And you know, Tweez has given up the most passing yards this season, but he's also thrown some bombs as well. Oh, man. This guy's just going back and forth, back and forth. True just trying to get momentum, and Tweez won't let him sniff it. 12 point game now. Oh, no. Now he wants the momentum back. Gotta beat the kicker. Oh, stumble recovery, use it. 
And Dan Bailey saved a touchdown. Didn't make the tackle in true kicker style, but he did slow him down. These guys just keep shutting me up. I'm saying Tweed won't let him sniff the momentum. And then True takes a deep sniff of some momentum with the big run back. Two possession games, still plenty of timeouts. Gets a block. Oh, oh. oh. Almost rolled over Atwater into the end zone. They'll mark him down at the one yard line. We got a battle going on right now, Coltrane. 3.23 left in this fourth quarter. QB sneak incoming. See if the Pickens can get in. Flips the play. Let's go. And Vic. Nope. Oh. Right there. About an inch away from breaking the plane. He doesn't get this sneak right here. Could be interesting. Let's go. Vic fan. And Vic. What, what? Whoa, he's in the in. world? Two box. We got chaos on the four. We got true on the one. Oh my goodness. Chaos trying to get back in it, and so is true at the same time. This is a big play for true on the left. Fourth and goal. Let's go. Oh, chaos gets lurked by Safa. True big fourth down here. There's action everywhere. Is he in? Oh, no. He's on the door. Oh, my. I would like to look at that third down again because it, I swear he broke the plane. I swear. Yeah, it looked good. I feel it's bad It's hard to tell true. from this angle. It look where this looked is. like he was in. Got to get two here. Got to get the safety. <laughs> Definitely, uh, I agree with you, Scott. I thought True was in with the Pickens. But nonetheless, no dice, and Tweeds get stench. Holds the door, keeps the momentum. I know we go back to chasing the points, but if he would have kicked the extra point, he would have had the opportunity to kick the field goal there on fourth down, and it would have been a one-possession game. Which are you calling for it? Hands it to Henry. Well, I mean, the Coach Coltrane? Sometimes coaches' suggestions might not always be the right thing, you know? And if, they, and if you, you feel like you're going to get some more possessions, then why not extend the game as far as you can? Big third and eight. Ball to two. Got to be careful if you tweeze. Here in the shadows. This is going to take this to the two-minute warning. He ain't snapping it. How about our other game? I know we had some action going on at the same time, but Chaos was all the way down in the red zone, had a chance to make it a one-score game, and threw another pick. The offensive struggles for Chaos, and you look at that game, Sop only has 12 points, and one of them came off the pick six. Chaos offense, he's playing good defense, but he's off offense killing Gotta him so far. Of oh, Tweez gets away. Throws it up. The the wow. It. Oh, he's still on his horse. Henry, Let's go! all the way to the 49. How many times have we seen him roll left and playmaker that guy up the sideline? Oh, yeah, that's a calculated play by him. I was impressed that he got away from the pressure. Usually when someone sheds, your meat back there for the defense. Weez puts the rollout on, gets away. Playmakers, crispy dot, good stick work after the catch. Young Grizzly, like I said, any time True would fight back, looked like he was going to take some momentum, Tweeds would stonewall him. Stretches it out to Henry. And you got to start using your timeouts, and he will. He had it on the one, and you couldn't punch it in. And then on third and eight at the two, you let him get away. And it, for those at home that don't know, the, in this competitive mode of Madden, there's no challenges. It's not a play that True could have challenged or spotted the ball. It's not something you do in online competitive games. The assumption is that the AI is just going to get the call right. So somewhere in those frames, that ball didn't cross the plane. Yeah, when you're, you're, you're playing look. franchise mode, you know, some other modes, there will be some error. And you can... Oh, and you, and, 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 sort of the natural human error of, of the referee 
But here in competitive mode, that's all gone. It yeah, doesn't yeah. exist. Exactly. The game's just programmed to make the right call, so you assume they got it, but visually it looked like he was in. Of course, we were looking at the end zone cam, not from the side, so it's hard to tell if he broke the plane. He's just going to run this block out. So this is not a year that the QB sneak is money. Dweez continues to impress so far this season. The underdog continues to pile up wins, adapt to much salary cap. Good show of respect by the two players up at the stage. Shaking hands on a 21-9 win for Tweez over True. So both games have come to a final. Tweez wins 21 to nine in Musafa with over 9,000 interceptions, wins 12 to nothing. You get shut out in Madden, that's, that's, that's rough. Yeah, I mean, look at Safa though. I mean, we know Chaos's offense has been struggling. We saw him turn the ball over in the red zone. We saw the pick six. But I'm telling you, this guy, Masafa Jones, right now is playing good John Madden football. He is here, he's focused, he's motivated, he's hungry. He has his crew members, some of the EMB guys here with him, helping him prepare from game to game. I'm, I'm looking for him to make the playoffs and maybe surprise a few people. Well, Musafa's on a roll, but so is Tweez, and he's standing by with Adrian Lawrence. Yes, I'm here with Tweez. Just got the win in the game over True. And I know you came into the competition in terms of having two wins and then two losses, and now you're back on your feet. What's different? I mean, I just I just had to watch. Like, I was playing bad yesterday, and I, I noticed what I was doing, so I came, came back today running the ball more, reading the coverage better. And <laughs> reading the coverage more and just running the ball more. That's it. And, like, Playing more defense, better defense. And what made you laugh? Just thinking about it. Like I was, I was up all night last night, just laughing, laughing. And what, what were you specifically focused on in your laughing last night? Defense. Defense. I'm not worrying about offense. I could get points at just getting stopped. And in terms of learning the salary cap mode, you feel good at that? Yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm real good at salary cap now. I'm, I'm adjusting. It's different from regs, but I'm getting used to it. All right, well, congratulations, and best of luck in the rest of your season. Dave Rico, over to you.